Hi everyone, Catherine here. Um, I hope you're having a good day. I just wanted to do a little lunch break um, session. So I'm working at home today and um, just having a little break for lunch. And I was thinking it would be nice just to talk to you um, about uh, job interviews. So um, I was thinking about this this week actually because I was interviewing a couple of people for jobs and um, I was just reflecting a little bit on the job interviews that um, I've been involved with over um, the last while. So for the last seven or so years um, I have um, been building teams and um, to do that you need to find really great people and the traditional mechanism for that is of course to put out a job ad and then interview people um, and I've kind of learned heaps of things through doing that and I thought it would be good to share those with you. Um, I've also been interviewed myself for roles and um, sometimes um, things go the way I want and sometimes they don't um, but I always feel that I'm able to be myself in those situations and I, and I always kind of um, walk away feeling good and so I'd like to help you um, understand a bit more about how I do that. Um, if you haven't seen any of my videos before I um, uh, help working mums to create the lives they want at home and at work and um, help people um, get into the right frame of mind and do the things that they want to do to make themselves feel happy and self-confident. Um, I run an eight-week programme for working mums. Um, I also do bespoke sessions, so if you have a job interview coming up and you would like to um, work with me to practice for the interview and do all your prep, then of course get in touch. So um, the first thing is, before the interview um, uh, day, um, you have a chance to do um, lots of prep and prep for job interviews. I think is the key to um, getting the outcome that you want. So just in terms of getting the outcome you want, I think it's quite useful just to think about what the outcome is. So sometimes you go into an interview situation and you think, well, I want them to offer me the job. That's the, that's the outcome that I want. But actually, I think a better way of looking at it is that a job interview is a conversation between you and someone and some people who you might work with in the future. And so it's really important to see the job interview as an opportunity for you to get to know the other organisation and for you to work out if it's a good match. So it's not a one sided thing. It's really a two way street. And if you can go into it in that frame of mind, that takes a bit of the pressure off, because when you're in a situation and you're like, like me, like me, please like me, please like me. I'm a really nice person. I'm a really good person. Please like me, please, please, please. That kind of frame of mind really comes across. And um, you can look uh, kind of a bit too keen for the job and where we want to be is a place where we feel relaxed, where we feel our authentic selves and where we feel really happy about going into this conversation. So if you can get yourself into that frame of mind of thinking it's a two way street, then that's a good first step. The other thing is, um, so sometimes when I've been prepping for job interviews myself, I slip into the bad habit of comparing myself to other people. And generally, this is something that I try not to do in my life because comparing yourself with other people is a road to ruin. It doesn't lead to good outcomes for anybody. So I'm normally quite good at that. And if I sometimes see myself thinking like, wow, she looks so much more amazing than me. She's so much smarter than me. She's so much this and me, that than me. Then normally I'm like, right, I just need to kind of step back from the situation and stop doing that. Um... But sometimes, for some reason, in a job interview scenario, this kind of happens. But the funny thing is, I don't compare myself often to an actual person. I compare myself to an imaginary person. So when I'm doing my prep for my job interview, I'll think that there's another candidate in the running who's also been invited to come in for an interview who's like me, but perfect. So they'll have had the experience that I've had, but more. They'll have studied, but done better. They'll have, um, they'll look better, they'll sound better, they'll come across better, they'll have more experiences. And it's kind of like myself, but not the flawed person I am, a perfect version of myself. And then I start to get nervous because I think, you know, 
I'm not going to compare well to that person. Obviously, this perfect person is better placed to do this job than I am. Then it makes me really nervous. Then I get into a really negative frame of mind. Then I start worrying about scarcity, like I'm not enough, like it's all going to be a disaster. So basically, you get the general picture. So you don't want to get yourself in that frame of mind. So I would basically say, don't compare yourself to anybody ever and definitely not in job interviews. And so when you're preparing for the job interview, what you really want to do is you want to be yourself. You want to really tap into your authentic self, be honest with yourself at the beginning about your strengths and weaknesses. And then you want to go into this job interview as a two way street kind of scenario. So the interview prep is really, really important. So um, I'm going to give you like a whole bunch of tips for how to prepare well for an interview. So first of all, do prepare. So as I said, I've interviewed like literally so many people. I've spent hours and hours and hours of my life interviewing people. You can always tell who has prepared and who hasn't prepared. Um, and if someone hasn't prepared, I kind of think, well, maybe they don't really want to work with me because if they did, they'd probably make a bit of effort to find out what my organisation does, what my team does. Um, and so you can always tell. So interview prep is really key and don't miss it out because um, it's going to um, be the thing that helps you get to where you want to be or not. So when you're doing your interview prep, the first thing I would say is sit down with a pen and a piece of paper and cast your mind back in the mists of time to a point in time where um, you did some things at work that you feel really proud of. So I'd say don't go back like too far, but think about the job you're doing at the moment. Think about the job that you did before that. Um, and just write a list of the things that you did that you were really happy with. So just be honest. And they can be little things. They can be big things. They can be you made a, a good contribution to a project. They can be you did a project by yourself. They can be you handled a difficult situation well. It might be that you had a, um, a good um, uh, interpersonal situation at work. It doesn't matter. Just write the list and kind of brainstorm at this stage and just write everything down. So the point of this is that you end up with a list of things that you've done in your current job and your past job. Hello, Lyra. How lovely to see you. Um, so write your list of things that you've done in your current job and your past job that you're happy with. And then see from that list whether you can identify some themes of things that you really enjoy doing. So they can be high level themes like maybe you really like analysing things. Maybe you really like um, helping people find solutions when they don't know what to do. Maybe you're reliable. Maybe you're dependable. Maybe you're creative. Whatever your things are and they're going to be different for everybody. Write your list of things um, that you think are your strengths and then keep those there because we'll come back to those later. So you've got your list of um, things that you've enjoyed doing at work. Hello. You've got your list of things you've enjoyed doing at work. From your list, you've identified themes for your strengths. So the next thing to do is to write down um, why you want to do this job that you're applying for, why you want to work for this organisation, and perhaps why you want to work for this particular team, um, if you know the people. And again, writing it down will help you crystallise the thoughts in your mind so that when you have your interview and they ask you, why do you want to work here? Or what is it about this job that interests you? You've got something that you've actually written down, practice saying out loud. So it sounds very convincing, very well thought through and very compelling. Because another thing I see in interviews a lot is people kind of waffle a little bit. So because they feel nervous and I do this myself when I'm nervous, I like talk a bit too much. So when people are feeling nervous and they're trying to think and talk at the same time, it can sometimes come across as a little bit waffly. So I would definitely advise you to get some of these important basic things written down in advance, prep for them in advance. And so that means that whenever it comes to an interview and you're feeling a bit nervous, you've done your prep. So you'll know what you want to say and you'll be confident and you can carry on. So you've basically written down the list of things you're proud of doing, identified some themes and written down why you want this job, basically. So the next thing is I would really recommend a little book. It's called A Powerful Pocket Book of Interview Skills. It's a tiny book um, and it's so, so good. So um, it basically um, categorises all the different interview questions into um, seven themes. And so it basically says that all interview questions are a variation on these seven themes. So um, if you prep for these seven themes, then you've basically got um, 
answers to the majority of interview questions that will ever come up in any interview for any role. So I'd really recommend that, the powerful pocketbook of interview skills. Um, okay, so um, the first theme that comes up that they talk about in this book is strengths. So you'll have some question which is like, um, why should we hire you? Why would you be good at this job? Um, why are you um, able to um, offer what we're looking for, basically? So the question can come up in lots of different ways, but it's basically, what are your strengths? And now you know what your strengths are because you've made your list of things that you've enjoyed doing and you've identified themes from that list. So have a think about, say, three things, the three most relevant things from your list that will help you with this job that you're applying for. And then the thing to do is to give examples of situations that you've been in in your past roles where you've used those skills and strengths to the advantage of the organisation that you're working for. So give three examples, talk about the situation that you were in, the opportunity that presented itself, your particular skill that you were able to use. Hi, Karina. Oh, how lovely to have you. So talk about... Um, the, the skills that you've used in the past and then what was the outcome, what was the situation. So the first theme is strengths. Okay, so the second theme that's going to come up in your job interview is weaknesses. So there'll always be a question about weaknesses. Often it's asked in quite a soft way, which is something like, um, everyone has development areas, can you tell us about your development areas? And obviously the thing here is that you don't want to be so honest and so self-critical that the people interviewing you think um, this person is basically unemployable, we can't give them a job. So you need to use the weaknesses question in a way that gives you the possibility of actually somehow communicating a strength. So one way to do that is to talk about um, a situation that you've been in where you felt that perhaps you didn't have what was needed at a particular moment in time. So maybe you've done a course to improve and then you can give an example of the situation being better. So something might be, for instance, that you didn't have particular technical skills like IT skills in a particular area. You might want to say that um, you weren't happy with that because you felt that um, you wanted to be able to make that contribution. So you went off and did a course and um, now you're proficient in um, a particular aspect of IT. So that's quite a good example. Or another one might be something like, um, you know, sometimes you um, uh, work too hard or you, you kind of, um, you really, really keep working until the end um, uh, of the day and, you know, you work very long hours and, and then you can say something like, you know, okay, that example sounds a bit trite, but you can have something like that and say that you basically realise that to be able to sustain high quality work over a period of time, that you need to be um, quite disciplined about switching off at a particular um, point of day so that you can recharge your batteries and then come back the next day all ready to go again. So strengths, weaknesses. The next theme that comes up is about being a team player. And so whenever I'm interviewing someone, so I always want to find somebody. It's really important to remember that when you're preparing for an interview. So I'm interviewing people not because I like interviewing people, although I do quite like interviewing people, but I'd be interviewing people because I want to find someone to fill a vacancy that I have within my team or within my organisation. So I'm always really hopeful that when someone walks in the door, they will basically be an appointable candidate. So I want to make that appointment. So on the team player questions, what people are really getting at here is, are you the right person to join my team? Do you have the kind of skills that I need in order to get my team to work well? Because nearly every job that we're going to be applying for involves working with other people. And so the team player questions are around, you know, how do you work with other people? Can you give examples of when you've worked in a team and got something done? And again, go back to your list of strengths that you wrote at the beginning and think about the times where you've worked with other people in order to achieve something really cool that you want to talk about. And it can be something related to a project. So you've worked well with other people with different skills, for example, in order to deliver a particular work product. Or it can be something a bit softer, like, for example, you've got together with some people and set up a corporate social responsibility team. Um, or maybe you've worked with others to do something for charity or something a little bit softer. It doesn't really matter what it is. But the thing is, again, to have thought in advance of your team, team skills, how you play nicely with others. 
and come prepared to speak about a couple of specific examples. And again, try not to get too waffly. Just talk about your, um, your particular examples and um, then ask any questions from the interviewer if they come up. So the next theme is um, you. So this is about you using your initiative, working by yourself. So when I'm looking for someone, I want to find a candidate who can work with my team. They're all really nice people. So I want to bring more nice people um, into my team. And um, ah, I've lost you. Um, oh, hopefully I've got you back. Hooray. Sorry about that. Um, so I want to bring people into my team who are good team players, but I also want to bring people into the team who can show initiative to come up with ideas of things to do and then get on with those things by themselves without having to be really, really closely supervised. So here, the, um, the team, uh, sorry, the, the initiative, um, question is an opportunity for you to show how you can think of um, examples of things you've done in the past and gone off and done them yourself. Obviously you don't want to come across as a loose cannon but give examples of things that you've done that demonstrate that you can use your initiative and when you're giving those examples take care to make sure that you talk about I. So I made this contribution, I went off and did this, I did x y and z because other times we can talk about we did it we did it and then the person can sometimes ask what have you actually contributed i'm getting a little sign saying that my internet connection's weak and it's been oh hopefully you can hear me okay i've got a bit of a broken internet today it seems so um we talked about strengths weaknesses being a team player showing your initiative the next example, um, the next sort of theme that's going to come up is about dealing with difficult people or difficult situations. So goodness knows most of us have a lifetime of examples to be able to give in interviews. But again, go for the examples that give you the opportunity to sell yourself and show your strengths. So go with examples of situations where you had a challenge, but you were able to overcome the challenge and then talk about what we learned from that challenge. So rather than describe a difficult situation or a difficult person who you've worked with and an unresolved situation, um, try to think of an example that gives you the opportunity to show that you ended up in a better place, basically, either individually or across the organisation as a result of this difficulty. The next theme is customer service. So this is an opportunity for you to talk about how you go above and beyond the basics of what you need to do. And there, that's really about understanding where an organisation is coming from, understanding what it's trying to do. So, for instance, you might be able to talk about the strategy of the organisation or perhaps conversations you've had with people um, in your network. So you understand what your organisation is trying to do and then talk about your contribution um, that you can make to the organisation. So for me, the customer service one is about getting the basics really right and giving examples to demonstrate that you're able to get things right but also you're able to go above and beyond and do things really well. Um, the final theme that comes up kind of depends the level of the role that you're applying for. So if you're applying for a role that um, involves you line managing other people or has a leadership position, an executive position in an organisation, you'll often be asked about your management style or your leadership style. So again, have a think about that in advance. And there aren't really any right answers or wrong answers with this one because people have different styles. So I personally like to work in a way that involves getting other people's views about things, asking my team to come up with ideas, throwing it all together and then working with people to come up with a plan. Other people have a more kind of... Um, a more individual way of making decisions so they prefer to just decide things and then tell people to crack on and you know that's fine as well but have a think about what your personal style is of leadership and management and again come with examples a couple will do and talk about how you've been able to add value to your organization through your leadership style so then the last um, part of the interview, hopefully it's all been going amazingly and you're feeling really good about yourself because you're thinking of it as a two way street. You've got a good um, vibe from the people that who are interviewing you. So you think you want to work with them. You've come with heaps of examples about great stuff you've done in the past. 
you've been able to present it in a thoughtful way because of all your prep that you've done. Then it comes to the point where they ask you if you've got any questions for them. And I always think it's a bit weird whenever people say, no, you've answered all my questions and then kind of get up to shake your hand. Because again, it makes me feel like they're just desperate to get out of the situation. Um, and if it's been going well, then it's always nice to hear some intelligent questions from them. So do your prep in advance. Um, I should have said this at the beginning, obviously spend a bit of time getting to know the company that's interviewing you, maybe look up their website to have a look at their strategy documents if they've published it, maybe their latest annual report. Um, and if you have a network, then of course reach out into your network and ask people for views about the company and see if those conversations provoke some questions in your mind. So it might be something like, you know, I've noticed that there was a news article that you were doing X, Y and Z. How do you feel about that as an organisation? Um, it might be something like, what particular challenges do you face at the moment um, or challenges that you see coming down the road? Um, so anything, those sorts of things, but just um, obviously make an effort to um, to demonstrate that you find out a little bit about the organisation and there's more that you want to know to help you make the decision about whether this is going to be the right organisation for you. Um, so basically that's it. So we've talked about getting yourself into the right headspace by realising this isn't just about them liking you, this is an opportunity for you to see if you like them. Also, not comparing yourself to the perfect version of yourself whenever you're doing your interview prep. Writing down a list of the things that you're really, really proud of. And then extrapolating from that list themes about your particular strengths. And then we've talked about the seven different categories of interview questions, which are basically your strengths, your weaknesses, um, uh, demonstrating you're a team player, demonstrating you can use your initiative, um, dealing with difficult people or situations, um, how you deliver on customer service, um, and also your management or leadership style. I would really recommend the little pocketbook of interview skills. It goes into all of these in more detail and gives you heaps of questions to help guide you through your interview prep. So if you do these things, you will be so amazing and totally ace it. Um, I hope this has been helpful. If you are preparing for a job interview and you want some help, then drop me a line. I'll be happy to help you prep. We can get in touch about that. Um, and um, if you're going for a job interview and putting these suggestions into practice, I would absolutely love to hear how you get on. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.